Okay, so the final storytelling pitfall we need to talk about is this notion of equity. Um, because it gets, as, as you're thinking about how to tailor your results to specific audiences, it gets really tempting to dumb it down and to think about it as dumbing it down and simplifying it. You do want to simplify your findings and tailor it to the audience's expertise, but you don't want to be condescending about it. Um, the, the phrase dumb it down is actually bad. Don't do it. Um, there are better ways of adapting your content to specific audiences. And a really good example of this is this video here, um, which again, if you press P in the slides here, um, you'll be able to see the link for it on YouTube. Um, but they take this neuroscientist and they basically have him explain his research to five different people who have different levels of expertise. So he has to explain his research to a child, a teenager, a college student, a grad student, and an expert. And what's really fascinating about this is when he's talking to the child, he doesn't talk like in baby language to them and, and dumb it down and treat the child like they know nothing. He treats the child like the child is smart and then gets on their level with his knowledge and interprets his results for that person, but does it in a way that is non-condescending. So I recommend pausing this video, clicking on the link here to watch this YouTube video here, um, because it is super fascinating how he navigates this translational issue of, of not dumbing it down, but translating it into something that is understandable by these different audiences. So go ahead and watch this video and then come back to me. And I'm assuming you did that. Um, if not, go do that because it's a really cool video. Um, but the idea here, another way of thinking about this is you're not dumbing down your results to audiences. You're translating. Um, so there's a famous philosopher of translation here, a linguist from the early 1900s named Walter Benjamin, um, where he argues that the task of the translator isn't just to take a word and change it to a different word in a different language. It's to find the intended effect upon the language into which he is translating, which produces in it the echo of the original. That was all super fancy language for saying you're trying to take the meaning of your findings and make it have that same echo, that same resonance to the audience at whatever level they're at. You're not dumbing it down. You're making it so that it works in their paradigm. You're translating it. Um, there are lots of different ways of doing this. Um, it's mostly just thinking about audience needs um, and audience experiences and trying to fit it into what they need. Um, there are fun ways of doing this. Um, there's the webcomic XKCD. Um, if you press P here, you can see a full um, a full version of this this graphic here. What this shows is the Saturn V rocket um, that sent Apollo missions up to the moon. Um, but he gives an entire diagram of the Saturn V rocket using only the most the what does he do the most the thousand most common words in the English language, and he limits himself to just that. So he can't say NASA. He has to say U.S. space team. He can't call it Saturn V because Saturn isn't a common word, one of the most 1,000 most common words. So he calls it the Upgoer V. Um, but all of these things, like it seems really like hokey, but it's a way of translating this into language that kids can understand here. So for instance, here's the people box. Um, this is the part that flies around the other world and comes back home with the people in it and falls in the water which is a really good explanation of what the command module is. Um, you have here, this is the, the thing to control which direction the escaping people go. So this is like a navigation system, I guess. Um, but it's clear because, again, this is not dumbing it down. This is translating very, very scientific rocket science-y terms into very ordinary language. Um, and it's really cool. Um, also, if you press P, there's a link to a text editor online that you can type in, but it also limits you to the 1,000 most common words. And so a fun exercise that you can try is to write a summary of some research project you're working on, but only using this language. And if you try to type a word that is not one of the 1,000 most common words, it doesn't let you type it. And so you basically have to write it in this, um, in this format here, which is hard to do. Um, it seems like it's really easy to just kind of dumb it down, but you're not dumbing it down. You're translating it to people using a very specific subset of language. So that is the focus. 
So if there's anything you need to remember from this whole section on kind of the ethics of storytelling, it's the idea that you should not dumb your stuff down. Don't think about it like that. Think about translation instead. When you dumb stuff down, it is inherently discriminatory and inherently just kind of mean-spirited and bad. Um, there's this fun Dilbert comic here um, where you'll, all, you'll often see something like this. Write your results so that your grandma can understand it or so that your mom can understand it. Um, and so the interface needs to be so simple that your mother could use it. And then Dilbert here says like she taught herself Ruby on Rails, which is a programming framework, over a weekend. And so like then imagine someone else's mother and so that's like there's built-in sexism there if you say make it so your mom can understand or your grandma can understand don't do that um because then that also leads to online like mansplaining type stuff um there's this fun twitter interaction from a few years ago um casey johnson here's a, a journalist um a tech journalist and she wrote this whole article about um why there's a lack of women in tech and one of the first responses to her article was this dude saying, hey, you need to read the full article. There's a chicken and egg problem with female tech role models, etc." And she responded with, yeah, I wrote the article. Um, you'll see this all the time. If you're a woman, you experience this all the time. Um, don't do that. <laughs> like, respect people's expertise. This comes from trying to dumb stuff down. Don't dumb stuff down. It's a bad approach. Um, Beyond that, there are also issues with who gets to speak for things and who gets to show their expertise and be relied on as an expert. Um, there's some really disheartening research about gender citation gaps all throughout academia. It's not just social science. Um, so if you look at here, astronomy, um, most people who publish in astronomy are men. Um, most of the top publications in astronomy are by male authors. Um, international relations and political science has the same problem. Engineering has the same problem. Um, it's not just academia. Here's this fun chart here that shows the gender balance on most political TV shows. Um, and so you see that like Fox News, Fox and Friends, 78% of their audience or their um, guests are male. Um, Anderson Cooper has kind of the best balance here, 54% male guests, 46% female guests. Um, Morning Joe on MSNBC, not great. Rachel Maddow, not great. Um, so women are like systematically um, omitted from political talk shows, which means um, their perspectives are not being heard. Um, you could do a similar type of graph for race, um, for age, for a whole bunch of other things, and it's all going to look very bad. Um, there are ways of getting around this. Um, there are networks of academics. Um, this one here is probably one of the most famous ones. It's called Women Also Know Stuff. It is for political science. Um, if you press P here, you can see a link to all of these different things that are, that are here. Um, basically, this women, who also, women Also Know Stuff is a big database of um, women political scientists with their expertise. And the recommendation is to, if, if you want to talk to an expert on something, go to this website, search for the issue that you're worried about or that you want to know about, and then contact those people who are experts but who are forgotten and who are not cited. Um, there are other networks that do similar things. There's um, people of color also know stuff, LGBT scholar network, academic women in public affairs. They have their own thing just for public policy, public administration type stuff. Um, so use those resources as you're doing research. If you're doing research for your, pro for your program, um, go to these websites and see what people who are not white males have been writing about your specific program and your policy issue. Um, they exist. Use those resources. Um, another thing you can do, um, there's this fun website here. If you click on this link, it'll take you there. It's a web application that basically lets you upload a bibliography, and it uses fancy algorithms to try to determine the gender of all of the authors, and then it spits out a number, um, and it shows you how balanced your uh, bibliography is and your resources are. Um, it, they call it the syllabus tool because... Um, Basically, syllabi are, are bibliographies. And so it's, it's a way of trying to get people who are instructors to be more balanced with their, um, with their course materials. But it also works for research. Um, so if you, have a, if you have a bibliography, 
paste it into there and see how balanced it is. And if you're way out of balance, if you're a Fox and Friends with like 80% men, um, fix it um, and cite people who are under uh, who are undersighted and underused. Um, and that will help improve kind of equity behind your storytelling and behind your research and your analysis. Um, so main findings from this equity idea. Um, don't dumb down your findings. Don't talk about it in that language because that does not show respect for your audience. It treats them as stupid and you're trying to make it so they understand. Don't do that. You're translating your findings. Um, treat your audience with respect as you're talking to them, as you're fitting your findings to their needs. Um, again, you're translating, you're not dumbing down. And then finally, amplify underrepresented voices. Um, and that helps with audience needs, that helps with the quality of your research, that helps with the quality of your storytelling. Um, make sure you do that. Um, and if you can avoid those pitfalls with unequitable um, storytelling, with manip avoiding manipulation, um, and um, just making sure that you're telling good stories that don't have conclusions that will be misinterpreted, um, you should be able to kind of give good convincing um, reports to people and convince people of your findings.